Welcome back to Mr. JDM. Uh, it's been a while since I posted a video. The weather's been really crappy. Uh, we've had a lot of snow, a lot of uh, rain. It's been really cold. We got ice. So I don't have a garage and I hate cold weather. So it's been a while and uh, but I'm glad to be back. We've got decent weather. It's like 47 degrees today. Um, we're going to get back to the red wagon. We are going to do the valve lash finally so we can get some oil in her and start her up. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. Uh, let's get to it. All right, like I said already, we're going to do the uh, valve adjustments, the valve lash, and the tools you're going to need is some kind of screwdriver and a, or a stick that will sit down into the spark plug tube and you don't want to have your spark plugs in there as you're doing this you need a 10 millimeter wrench and a flathead screwdriver so you can stick it on here to adjust the valves or you can get this tool which is pretty nice it's like a 10 millimeter wrench with a screwdriver built into it. It's like an all-in-one tool. It just it makes the process so much simpler. And I got a little cheat sheet here because I don't remember every single process. I mean, I've got the basic rough idea, but it's whatever. Um, this will help out. And I'll put a link in the description for this, um, for the whole PDF, the uh, service manual. One other tool I forgot, you're going to need a feeler gauge. This is so you can adjust the spacing between the top of the valve and the adjustment pin. So what we need to do is make the first uh, number one top dead center. And in order to do that on the cam gear, it'll have an up arrow or it'll say up with an arrow something like that right here and it'll have like the two marks on the sides that should be level with the uh the head so let's start making this top dead center i would just put a uh socket on the crank and you want to crank it counterclockwise Alright, as you can see it's going up and about right there is top dead center and I would say right about there is top dead center. The up mark is facing upwards and the little lines are even with the head. Next thing we're going to do is uh, figure out what the size of the gap is and it shows it right here your intake and your exhaust we're going to start with the exhaust side so we got 9 to 11 we're going to do split the difference and go 10 and we got my feeler gauge here it's kind of hard to read but that is 10 and the kind that are curved are much easier to use so we're going to loosen the adjustment nut right here on top go ahead and do both of them and we take our flathead screwdriver well i'm going to get your feeler gauge stick it in between the valve and the adjustment nut Take your flathead screwdriver and turn the adjustment until you feel a slight drag. About right there. You want to hold this still as you retighten the, the nut. Then we go back and check it and it's too loose. That's why these kind of suck because you can't hold it straight 
But with this, you can hold it a lot better. We're going to loosen that back up and stick our feeler gauge back in there. Got a little bit of drag. Push down to lock it in and Tighten the nut to lock it down. And there we go. We got a little bit of drag on there. Now let's do the next one. Just turn the screwdriver until you get that adjustment nut or until you get the adjustment pin to where it puts a little bit of drag on the feeler gauge and then you want to hold it still as you tighten the lock nut all right and you got a little bit of drag and that's it now we're going to do the uh, intake side and as you see here it's between seven and nine so we're going to do eight again you can't read it but i know this is eight because this is the first one and it's the smallest one i have all right we're going to loosen the two lock nuts on here on the exhaust side and you don't want to push down on the screwdriver as you're doing it because that will push down onto the adjustment pin and cause drag All right, we got a little bit of drag. Now you can push down onto it. Okay, for whatever reason, my camera stopped recording. So apparently it only records 10 minutes at a time. I don't know why. Hmm, some kind of setting or something. So anyway, um, I'm not sure where I stopped off at. I think it was here. But we are done with number one. So now we need to do the next one, but we, we go by the firing order and the firing order is one, three, four, and two. So that's one, three, four, and two. And technically you turn it um, on number three, to get top dead center you turn it to 180 degrees counterclockwise um, until the mark is the mark the up mark should be at the exhaust side and I don't have the distributor on there so that doesn't really matter I'm gonna do the timing once I get it all together with the light gun so Let's get this top dead center and this will be to the top. And we rotate it counterclockwise. And that's top dead center. So we do the same thing on these valves. We're going to loosen and we get a feeler gauge and because we're doing the exhaust side we use the 10 that one
we stick our feeler gauge in there and we turn our adjustment pin or lock or whatever you want to call it until you feel a little bit of drag which is right there then you can push down and tighten the lock nut And of course we go back and check and it might be a little too tight. So let's loosen it. And let's call it right there. And that's perfect. All right, we do the same thing on the next one. And then we get a little bit of drag about right, right there. And we tighten the lock nut. And we double check. And that one feels a little loose, so let's go back and do it again. Come on. There we go. Loosen it. Feel some drag right there. All right, and now we got that, the exhaust side done. Let's do the intake side. All right, and that's basically how you do it. So we got one and three done, and we need to do um, number four. And so we turn it another 180 degrees to make that one top dead center. And of course you, you go counterclockwise And now your up mark should be facing straight down. We're going to do the exhaust side. So we got number 10. All right, we got the uh, exhaust valves. Now we're gonna go to the intake valves. And of course you wanna switch to your other exhaust or your, your other feeler gauge, which is gonna be an eight. All right, we finished the uh, number four. Now we're gonna go to number two, because that's the firing order. And you wanna make that top dead center where the, uh, the up arrow is facing the intake side. I've already uh, turned the crank already. Didn't realize the camera had stopped recording, but I figured it out. It's now not gonna stop after 10 minutes. So now we're going to loosen all the nuts. Alright. And we're going to do the intake side first. So that is intake. We're going to do uh, between 7 and 9. So we're going to do 8.
and we keep turning until we get a little bit of drag which is that's too far say about right there and we're going to double check all right perfect let's move on to the next one all right we got that now let's move on to the exhaust side which we're going to switch to the number 10 feeler gauge and we got a little bit of drag which way do I go George all right and this one's way loose a little bit of drag lock it down double check all right and that's how you do a valve lash adjustment it's pretty straightforward um it's pretty easy honestly you just need a couple tools um like i said you can use a 10 millimeter wrench and just a regular screwdriver i don't know where my 10 mil wrench went but oh well or you can buy this i i want to say it was like 25 30 bucks on amazon um i'll put a link in the description um i don't know the b20s have a 12 millimeter and i can't find this tool for a 12 millimeter that's like less than a hundred dollars which seems to be ridiculous but it works pretty well and again the feeler gauge get the kind that are angled just because it makes things a lot easier okay well uh, hopefully this helps you out just a little short tutorial on how to do the valve lash on a single cam I believe it's pretty much the same on a F-Series or any other single cam, Honda engine. I believe the D and the F are the only single cam. I uh, could be wrong. I think I'm right. But um, anyway, it's good to be back. And we've got a bunch of projects coming up. So please stay tuned. And I will see you all in the next video.